a smaller number of scientists and engineers, but you can see that the giants, the United States, Japan, and China, are having, are spending a lot of money, and at the same time, we have plenty of researchers and engineers that are contributing to the process. So, it's, again, it's a tough procedure. When I, went, when I came back to Egypt, uh, one of the things that I actually wanted to see is what are our problems? You know, these, these are the health associated problems in Egypt. Egypt is ranking in the top list in so many of the diseases worldwide. For example, Egypt is number one in hepatitis C, and luckily the government now is discovering this and they are handling this the issue quite effectively, as a matter of fact. Egypt is number one in bladder cancer, number three in, in, in crime disorders, and several other uh, 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 diseases. So our problem is really dire. It's a very big problem. And it's very important to think how to, all of us, how, how every one of us can actually contribute to this. So, uh, why did I think about mitochondria? Mitochondria is a very fascinating organelle in the cell. It's, it's usually or classically considered to be the uh, cell, uh, the bioenergy uh, or bioenergetics or the fuel source of the cell. However, mitochondria is playing much more uh, 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 diverse uh, roles in the cell. And now the relationship or the roles of mitochondria in all of these diseases, including obesity, diabetes, neurodegeneration, aging, and so on, mitochondria is playing a core role in these kind of uh, diseases and uh, uh, conditions. So that's why I decided to uh, utilize my expertise and establish a uh, sort of center for studying mitochondria. And this is my second center. So yeah, you can't see anything written, right? Uh, this is a problem. Here, I was trying to say that mitochondria is an important element in the cell, and I was listing what kind of, uh, of features and function in mitochondria to be studied. Uh, I will uh, come back to this a little later. So for this, but now currently in, in hospital, uh, uh, the uh, Children's Cancer Hospital in Egypt, uh, the, the administration is extremely uh, interested in finding new ways for uh, handling cancers, especially pediatric, uh, in the field of pediatric oncology. Uh, I established a laboratory there, which is really uh, focused on uh, uh, studying the interaction between metabolism and metabolic pathways in cancer cells. The idea is that cancer, when it happens, it has hallmarks, hallmarks of cancer transformations. One of the most important aspects of these hallmarks is metabolic transformations. So your cells are now behaving differently because of the very quick proliferation and also the microenvironment. Each cancer cell is uh, exhibiting a sort of different type of metabolism uh, relative to, uh, to normal cells. This opens a huge opportunity because if you target metabolic pathways in cancer, probably you are not going to target normal cells. So the, the laboratory that I hospital uh, includes these kind of facilities. These are the main core uh, equipment and of course it's quite expensive to establish uh, a center like this. This is uh, this, the collection of, uh, of this uh, uh, equipment is uh, more than a million dollars. So that's how we talk about, about sustainability in scientific research and without a belief, a strong belief of the administration of the hospital in, in investing in science, of course, it would have been very difficult to establish such kind of thing. So, metabolism is quite complicated uh, sort of, of, uh, of biology, and as you can see, we have plenty of pathways to study. Mainly, we are focusing on studying the pathway that, uh, of consumption, uh, consumption of oxygen and, and proto release. I'm not going to go into the great details because I'm, I'm quite sure that time is running quite fast. Not for me, but for, uh, for, uh, for our panel here. So uh, uh, I will just uh, touch upon uh, two stories uh, where we have contributed uh, some, some papers that are coming up quite soon. The first one is about breast cancer. Breast cancer in Egypt, uh, it, we have an increase in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the lifetime risk of death. By breast cancer, Egypt is among the top countries. You can see that there is an increase of about 1% of, 
of the chance or likelihood of uh, uh, breast cancer to be one of the causes of death. Uh, of course, it's a big problem, and we uh, we wanted to contribute to this. And uh, uh, breast cancer has multiple types. There are uh, several of them. I, I don't have the time to talk about them. But one of the worst uh, cancer in terms of prognosis is what's so called the triple negative breast cancer, which doesn't express the uh, the estrogen receptors on the cancer cells. And you can see that the, from the survival analysis, this is the worst prognostics. The uh, patients, they die in, in a quite uh, a quick manner. So uh, what we did is we thought uh, what is uh, the difference between the trichinated breast cancer and the uh, hormone response of breast cancer in terms of, uh, of, the, uh, of the metabolism. And we did this by using a state-of-the-art systems to uh, evaluate glycolytic activities and we can see that the MCF7 is a representative of the hormone response and MDA, which is a representative cells for the uh, triple negative breast cancer. There are some differences in the metabolic uh, profile. Also, that there is a big difference in the mitochondrial profiles and uh, we summarize this in terms of that the MCF7 or the uh, hormone responsive cells, they utilize mitochondria a lot more than the MDA cells, which rely more on the glycolytic activities. And that's why we uh, tried to inhabit these glycolytic activities in both cells, and we saw very different type of, uh, of behavior. Uh, very similar to the in vivo situation, when we uh, carried out the, uh, the cytotoxicity, MCF7 was resistant in the beginning, but after 24 hours, they died completely. Whereas the, uh, the uh, reproductive cells, they were responsive in the beginning, but then there is some sort of rescue or survival or reversal in their uh, cell survival. Uh, when we challenge this with the glycolytic inhibitor. This is very, very uh, similar to the situation in view, but we discovered by flow psychometry and many, many other techniques that mitochondria play very important role in this. So we discovered that the resilience or the resistant subpopulation of cancer cells is relying more on mitochondria, and that's why we focused on combining therapies of known current ther therapies with mitochondrial targeting therapies. I, 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 uh, I'll skip uh, details about this, and I will take you to the second story because we are out of time. Uh, now we are talking about autism. Autism is one of the uh, disease and, and, and developmental uh, childhood uh, disorder, behavioral disorders that are really overlooked in Egypt. Uh, so how many times did you hear or you encounter someone who's actually autistic and how do you know how to deal with them? Uh, this is a big problem in Egypt, although the, the trend is that the, the, there are more and more cases that are discovered. You can see that one in every one hundred now is the current rate of, of autism spectrum disorder. Uh, there is a, a lot of things that are associated with autism uh, and specifically it's indicating mitochondria in the pathogenesis of autism. You can see that there is a mitochondrial dysfunction, there is oxidative stress, and this leads to neurodegeneration. There is also the uh, uh, gastrointestinal inflammation and neuroinflammation and cerebral hypofusion. All of these phenotypes are connect in a way or another with mitochondria. So the problem is that, well, of course, there are a lot of things that are trying to explain or to investigate the mechanism of this, uh, of this disease. And people are implicating mitochondria activation of the immune cells or abnormal mitochondrial calcium handling. And finally, they are also implicating oxidative stress. The problem is that the exact rule of mitochondria in the pathogenesis of this disease is not really well understood or not, not known. That we hypothesize that, that if uh, mitochondria is playing an important role, are they upstream or downstream? Are they causes or effects of the disease? So we decided to use the, uh, a, 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 a paradigm where people are using hyperbaric oxygen therapy to try to treat uh, autistic uh, disorders. It is known that uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy improves mitochondrial function. So we wanted, we asked it whether hyperbaric oxygen therapy is going to improve mitochondrial function and whether this improvement is going to lead to improvement in the behavioral deficits of autistic children. If it happens, this means that mitochondria is playing a very important causal role in the disease. If not, this means that 
the disease is, uh, is the mitochondrial dysfunction is a phenotype and is not a cause and effect of the disease. So uh, what we did is we uh, uh, investigated uh, the hyperbaric, we uh, recruited the three uh, different groups, control group and um, uh, tested children, and tested children that were treated with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, and then after one year, we uh, collected blood samples and forced measures of the autistic scale, the autistic scale, the behavioral test. What we did later is we collected the blood samples and we studied the, uh, first we fractionated blood samples, we isolated biocytes, lymphocytes, and platelets, and we focused on platelets because platelets are mostly using mitochondria, and that's why we studied platelets in a way, and of course they rely on oxidative phosphorylation more than glycolysis. Uh, we uh, carried out several studies, including also uh, uh, monitoring NADPH oxidase, which is a very important enzyme in the immune response, because also this is implicated in our test. Uh, to give you, uh, to make a, short, a long story short, we found that there is a severe uh, 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 dysfunctional uh, uh, mitochondria in autistic children, and this was partially recovered in, uh, by hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, this also happens regarding uh, two different other complexes in mitochondria, and we did also uh, uh, study the respiratory capacity or how effectively uh, they can handle stress, these patients. And we uh, also studied the, uh, the immune system and we found also some drop in autistic children that was partially recovered by the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And the, 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 this is the also, uh, again, uh, monitoring an enzyme in the blood, in the neutrophils of the blood of the, of the patients. And we found that there is a, a very dramatic uh, drop in this response in autistic children that was really significantly recovered by hyperbaric oxygen. However, after doing this, we didn't see any improvement of the behavioral outcome of the autistic children by hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This indicates that mitochondria is probably secondary to the disease rather than being the primary cause of the disease. So, uh, the conclusion is that mitochondria have a clear deficit in autistic platelets. This deficit is not likely to be due to mitochondria biogenesis, and hyperbaric oxygen mildly improve mitochondria function but not behavioral deficits. Clear uh, suppression of the oxidative burst in autistic neutrophils and hyperbaric oxygen mildly recovered the neutrophil NOx uh, activity. And we uh, discovered that, of course, mitochondria is not uh, downstream, it's upstream. We, started, we study mitochondria, as, as I said, because it's a very important aspect in, in, uh, in the pathogenesis. And, of course, mitochondria, according to this, uh, this graph by Kim, by, uh, you can see that. Uh, there is a point, I don't know whether this is a point or not, but this uh, corner, it's a, it's a kind of, you know, a, a conflict between life and death. And you can see both life and death are shaped as my body. Here, it's birth, it's health, it's aging, it's and everything, including disease, and this is death, which is actually ruled and governed by my body. And that's why we are studying my body. I'd like to thank uh, all contributors to this, this work, here and my group in Zuid City, and as well as also in, in, in uh, 1570, 1570, and SDF for funding us. These are all international collaborators in the United States and in uh, the UK. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Professor Ali, uh, for the interesting book.